Hello and good evening and welcome to episode 53 of The Organist Entertains from here at Bells Hill Central Parish Church. Tonight's episode isn't what I billed it to be last week. It is instead a collection of hymns and their tunes loosely connected to the four saints of the United Kingdom. Saint Patrick, Saint David, Saint George and Saint Andrew. Now let's hear something about our four saints. The four patron saints of the United Kingdom, as I've said, are St. Patrick, St. David, St. George and St. Andrew. Now, patron saints we can have for all sorts of things, like jobs, organisations and animals. For example, St. Francis of Assisi loved nature and wildlife, so he is a patron saint of animals. Now, Starting with St. Patrick. St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland and he is celebrated for bringing Christianity to the country. And we start with St. Patrick because we celebrate St. Patrick on the 17th of March, the day that I bring to you episode 53. St. Patrick's Day started as a religious feast to celebrate St. Patrick's work. However, it's now grown to be an international festival of all things Irish. People take part in parades and dancing, eating Irish food and enjoying firework displays. The day is also famous for people wearing shamrocks, dressing up as bearded Irish fairies called leprechauns and wearing green. Moving on to St. David. St. David's Day honours the patron saint of Wales, St. David. It's celebrated every year on the 1st of March by the people of Wales and others around the world. Now, because we've missed the 1st of March, that's why St. David comes second in tonight's episode. On the day, many people choose to wear the Welsh national symbol, such as the daffodil or the leek. Children are known to take place, take part in traditional Welsh dances, sing Welsh folk songs and recite Welsh poetry and take part in their school concerts. The third of our patron saints is England's patron saint, St George, who became a symbol of the country. St George's Day is England's national holiday and it is celebrated on the 23rd of April each year. According to legend, St George killed a dragon and saved a princess when he was a soldier in the Roman army. And that is why St George comes to represent bravery. He's not only respected here in the United Kingdom, but he is respected by Christians in Israel, Greece and Russia. And finally, our fourth patron saint, Saint Andrew, who is, of course, the patron saint of Scotland, and we celebrate St Andrew's Day on the 30th of November. St Andrew is also the patron saint of Romania, Greece, Russia, Ukraine and Poland. St Andrew's Day falls on the 30th of November. Now, patron saints, as I've said, are chosen for various reasons 
and patron saints of countries are generally chosen to be a special protector or a guardian. So who was St Andrew? We don't know much about St Andrew. It's believed that he was born between the years 5 and 10 AD in a place which is now part of Israel. He went on to become one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. The 12 people that Jesus chose to closely follow him. Andrew's brother, Simon Peter, was also one of the disciples and they both lived in Galilee where they were fishermen. And funnily enough, St Andrew never actually stepped foot in Scotland his entire life. So why is he the patron saint of Scotland? There's no clear tale that answers that question. One story says that in the 9th century, King Angus in Scotland was preparing for a battle against the English. St Andrew appeared to King Angus in a dream, promising him victory on the day. An X symbol appeared in the sky which was the symbol of St Andrew. He vowed that if he won, St Andrew would be made the patron saint of Scotland. And that is exactly what happened. And that is why the Scottish flag has the X shape on it, the St Andrew's cross, the Psalter. So that's us introduced to our four patron saints of the four nations which make up the United Kingdom. And now on to our first set of hymns, which are in honour of St Patrick. Before we begin, and now that I've given the, the brief introduction to tonight, and before we move on to what we're doing, I have a small admission to make. Bear with us a second. This is my old mobile phone, and this is what I use to record the dual camera aspect of the Organist Entertains. This camera, my old phone, is usually set up on this little tripod, thus on the floor looking at my feet. However, today I thought that I would change that a little and I set it up to my left hand side so that you could see what my hands are doing. Now, hopefully you can see that. However, watch what I did. I press the record button and then, for some reason, pressed stop. So when I went back to turn it off, it was sitting like this. Black, blank screen. So I'm afraid you've only got the one viewpoint tonight. Instead of seeing my feet in action or close-ups of my fingers, You've just got the overall view. However, I do hope that you enjoy hearing what has been recorded. It leaves plenty of room in the screen for the words. So every dark cloud has its silver lining, I suppose. But anyway, enough admissions from me. And now let's move on to what we're going to be talking about and hearing in tonight's episode. Our first hymn is chosen for its tune. The hymn is, Lord of creation, to you be all praise. Itself is a hymn written by John Copley Winslow, who was alive between 1882 and 1974. The tune for Lord of all hopefulness is, of course, that wonderful Irish traditional melody of Slain which we can also sing, probably more familiar to
to the words of Be Thou My Vision. So we start with this wonderful Irish melody, Slain, which this particular version is arranged by Eric Routsley. <laughs> Our second hymn tonight, Sticking with St. Patrick and Ireland. It's chosen for its tune, London Derry Air, otherwise known as Danny Boy. Now, London Derry Air is an Irish air that originated in County London Derry. It's a popular tune among the, the American Irish dysphoria, and it is well known throughout the world. The tune is played as the victory sporting anthem of Northern Ireland at the Commonwealth Games. The hymn which we sing to it today is a hymn by William Young Fullerton. I cannot tell why he whom angels worship should set his love upon the sons of men or why, as shepherd, he should seek the wanderers to bring them back, they know not how or when. I know that the ladies in the Women's Guild will enjoy this hymn because the tune London Derry Air fits one of the Guild hymns, Inspire as Lord. I do hope everyone enjoys this familiar tune 
and the words which will appear on the screen talks about Jesus through Easter and Christmas and all the various stages of his life in between. Danny boy, London did it air. I cannot tell why he whom angels worship.
our third hymn tonight as I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity, words written, attributed to St. Patrick himself. And the words which will appear on the screen are translated by Cecil Francis Alexander. The tune to this grand hymn is St. Patrick, of course, an Irish traditional melody, which has been arranged by Charles V. Stanford. Now, this hymn, you need to have your wits about you as you play it. It has, on the face of it, six verses. However, verse one is half the length of everything else. Verse two, verse three, verse four, and verse six are sung to the double long meter tune of St. Patrick. However, verse five, Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, is not to the tune of St. Patrick. It's to another Irish traditional melody, Clonmacnoise. And this particular version is arranged by Richard Runciman Terry. Verse 6 returns to St. Patrick. It's in the minor key, but it finishes with a tierce de Picardy, which means we finish in the major key as we finish with a grand Amen. So here we have words by St. Patrick himself. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity.
Our final hymn in our St. Patrick's Day selection is the hymn, Come Holy Ghost, Our Hearts Inspire. Let us thine influence prove. Words by Charles Wesley. The hymn tune is St. Columba from the Petrie Collection of Irish Melodies and harmonised by the Church Hymnal Irish Edition of 1874. It's a, a waltz time, three beats in the bar melody, and it's a gentle and beautiful tune in harmony. I had to bite my tongue as I played it because I am used to singing the tenor line of this we in church quite often have this as one of our choir introits, which starts off our church services. So now we have, Come Holy Ghost, our hearts inspire, let us thine influence prove, to the Irish melody of St Columba. Moving on to some hymns associated with St David and Wales, we start with a hymn tune entitled Saint David. Its source is the Ravenscroft's Psalter of 1621. And the text which we have it set to is Give praise and thanks unto the Lord, which is, of course, one of our great Psalms of faith. Give praise and thanks unto the Lord, for bountiful he is. His tender mercy doth endure unto eternity. One of the things about doing these organist entertains is that by having themed episodes, I get the chance to look up the internet and find hymns and tunes which I wouldn't ordinarily come across. St. David is one of these tunes which I haven't seen before. However, it's lovely. 
and there must be hundreds or thousands of tunes like this. So hopefully, as the organist entertains progresses, we will discover more tunes which we haven't heard for many years. However, our first tune for St David is the tune St David, set to the words of give praise and thanks unto the Lord. Our second hymn, with a nod to St. David's and Wales, is the hymn, Praise the Lord, His Glories Show, Alleluia. Hymn words written by Henry Francis Light. Now, the tune is why I have chosen it. It is the Welsh tune, Chlan Fair, a melody by Robert Williams. It's a tune which some people may find familiar from Eastertide of Jesus Christ is Risen Today, Alleluia. However, it's known in the Church of Scotland to Praise the Lord, His Glories Show, Alleluia by Henry Francis Light. It's a wonderfully joyful tune with the repeated Alleluias at the end of each line, which you can't help but be joyful and happy about whilst singing. So here we have, for St. David and Wales, the hymn tune, Clan Fair.
Our third hymn in the St. David's section is Through the love of God our Saviour, all will be well. Which, of course, is set to the Welsh traditional melody of Er Hadenos, all will be well. This is a tune which many people will be familiar with, especially with the stunning sounds of the Welsh male voice choirs which came out of the valleys of Wales. I'm sure everyone enjoys hearing it, and we certainly do enjoy singing it. As I say, it's in our hymn book, set to the words of Through the Love of God our Saviour, All Will Be Well, written by Mary Peters. The last item, with our nod to Saint David, had to be Cum Ronda, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. The tune is by John Hughes of Pontypridd, and the words are written by William Williams. Now, as I said with All Through the Night, or All Will Be Well, this particular tune has stirring memories for lots of people with male voice choirs singing it up and down the land. For me, I have memories of hearing this on Songs of Praise, where coming from perhaps St. David's Cathedral, the three verses sung in English, and then we have the final refrain. O Amaros, O Amaros, I need Gary a fight foes, I need Gary a fight all thy foes. Now, apologies to any Welsh people who are singing, listening to that. My pronunciation, I have looked it up, but I'm not getting it right. However, I have tried. So, we finish our St. David's section with Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, to the grand Welsh tune of Cumronda.
Moving on to our third saint, we have St George. And this particular section of the four hymn choices, three of them explores tunes titled St George. The first of these tunes, and they usually always have a subheading, such as this one has, St George's Windsor, so that they're not all mixed up. St George's Windsor was written by George Elvey, who died in 1893. And St George's Windsor is the hymn tune which we all know and love, to come you thankful people come. The hymn which generally starts many of our harvest services in churches up and down the land. We've missed harvest for one year and hopefully we'll be back in church for the next harvest services in September or October time. So for the people who have missed singing, come you thankful people come at harvest time. We have it tonight. Thanks to it being to the tune of St George's Windsor. Our second hymn in our St George's section is only in it because the hymn tune is titled St George. It is a Scottish psalm tune and to give it its full title it's called St George's Edinburgh by Andrew Thompson. 
It is the second half of Psalm 24. Ye gates, lift up your heads on high. With the coda at the end, with umpteen alleluias and amens. This is a firm favourite of the Scottish churches and Presbyterians up and down the land, especially on Communion Day services. I remember being organist at Broom Knoll Church in Airdrie and the elders, the session, processed out of the sanctuary during the first part, which is to the tune St Matthew, the earth belongs unto the Lord. They then burst back in from the doors at the back of the sanctuary to St George's Edinburgh. Ye gates lift up your heads on high, bearing the elements of bread and wine and laying them on the communion table because that was the start of the communion part of the service. So for lots of people, this hymn has great memories and great meanings of their time in church. And thanks to it being called St George's Edinburgh, I've included it in the St George's section of tonight's Organist Entertains. Our third tune in the St George's section is called St George. However, this one is called St George Bolton. This is one of these tunes which I've never come across before. And had I not been looking up hymns 
or tunes associated with St George, I would never have come across it. It's a little bit like the St David's tune that we had earlier. It's set to the words, the dawn of God's dear Sabbath. And I am sure as you hear it being played that you will agree with me, it's a lovely melody with a lovely and interesting harmony. It's well written, well constructed, and I personally am quite glad that I've stumbled across it. So here we have now for you, St George Bolton, The Dawn of God's Dear Sabbath. The fourth hymn in our St George's section isn't a hymn or a tune with the name St George in it. However, it is a very patriotic hymn which sums up St George. It's the hymn, I vow to thee my country, which has as its tune Thaxted. Thaxted is a town just northwest in Essex. It derives from the Old English thoic, combined with steed, which is a place for thatching materials are got. It's mentioned in the 1086 Doomsday Book. It developed as a Saxon settlement, and there is evidence of Roman villas to the east of the current town, and Roman artefacts have been discovered there many, many times. The tune Thaxted is 
by Gustav Holst and it is from his Planets Suite. The hymn, I vow to thee my country, country, conjures up images of the St George's flag being waved proudly and patriotically on occasions such as a Queen's procession or some sort of army or veterans parade. So I do hope that you excuse me not picking a fourth tune of St George. However, I am sure that you hopefully agree with me that it's well suited for thinking about St George, England and the patriotic thoughts which come from thinking of St George. Our final section brings us to St Andrew and all things Scottish. One of the most famous things to come out of Scotland is Rabbi Burns. And if you ask anyone to think of something by Rabbi Burns, they would probably say Auld Lang Syne. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never thought upon? I looked up the tune of Auld Lang Syne, which of course is a Scots folk melody, and looked up what hymns it may fit. And I remember playing at a service probably 20 plus years ago where the minister had selected tunes known to us here in Scotland, which could be set to traditional hymn words. I can't find that list at all at home. I hopefully will stumble across it again one day. However, I stumbled across the hymn, Hail sweetest, dearest, tie that binds, 
which can be sung to the Scots folk tune of Auld Lang Syne. Our second hymn in our St Andrew's section is the hymn Gracious Spirit, Holy Ghost, which is in our current and previous editions of the Church of Scotland hymn books with words written by Christopher Wordsworth. The tune in the hymn book is Charity, written by John Stainer. However, looking up hymns that fit Scots tunes and with an association of Scotland's National Bard, I have come across the tune of Scots Wahey, which obviously has its lyrics written by Robert Burns, which were given in the form of a speech by Robert the Bruce before the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314. Now, the lyrics themselves that we know are, of course, by Burns, but he wrote them to the traditional Scottish tune of He Tutti Tati, which according to tradition was played by Bruce's army at the Battle of Bannockburn. So here we have the tune which we all know to Scots wa he we Wallace bled. Two words out of our hymn book called Gracious Spirit, Holy Ghost. And I am sure that you will enjoy hearing words which you may know to different tunes played to these traditional Scottish melodies.
Our penultimate hymn is Jesus Calls Us or the tumult of our lives' wild, restless sea. It's in our hymn books, set to the tune of St Andrew. Now, the hymn itself mentions St Andrew by the Galilean lake, who turned from home and toil in his kindred, leaving all for Jesus. And that is something which us Scots remember and think about, about how the fishermen left their nets behind and followed Jesus. And that is something which we are immensely proud of in that Saint Andrew is our patron saint. And of course, this hymn, as I've said, is set to the tune, Saint Andrew. So we had to include it in our St Andrew's Scots section of tonight's Organist Entertains. Our final hymn in our Organist Entertains tonight, as we conclude our little journey with the four saints of the United Kingdom and St Andrew being our last saint that we are looking at, is the hymn Praise to the Man. And that is from a poem written as a tribute to John Smith by the Latter-day Saints leader and hymn writer William Phelps. The poem itself was composed soon after Smith's death, death and was set to music and adopted as a hymn of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. Its tune is loosely based on Scotland the Brave and it was chosen to be the tune of this poem in honour of Phelps's Scottish heritage. Now, Scotland the Brave is, of course, a patriotic Scottish song, and it's one of several often considered an unofficial Scottish national anthem, the others being, of course, Flower of Scotland and Scots Wahey. The tune was first played probably in the late 19th century and the lyrics commonly used were written about 1950 
by a Scottish journalist for the singer Robert Watson. As near as 2006, the song rated second in an online poll of more than 10,000 people to try to determine Scott's favourite unofficial national anthem, losing out only to Flower of Scotland. The song and its tune were used to represent Scotland in the Commonwealth Games until it was replaced by Flower of Scotland from 2010 onwards. So here we have for you a hymn from the Church of the Latter-day Saints, praise to the man who communed with Jehovah, set to a tune loosely based on Scotland the Brave. Well, folks, thanks for tuning in tonight for a slightly different Organist Entertains. However, I like to try and give some of our episodes a theme, something to work our way through. In doing so, 
we stumble across hymns which we wouldn't normally find. For example, St. George's Bolton, the tune St. David, and the hymn which we have finished with, Praise to the Man, to the tune of Scotland the Brave, more or less. Please join me next week for episode 54, which I promise will be more like normal. It will have your requests and dedications. However, we are hurtling towards Easter and I would like to play for you some of our wonderful Passion Tide hymns, starting with Lent, things like 40 Days and 40 Nights, Jesus Tempted in the Desert, and then thinking more to Holy Week, there is a green hill far away. My song is love unknown. When I survey the wondrous cross, I'll hold back on things such as thine be the glory. Jesus Christ is risen today until we reach after Easter. So thank you for joining with me tonight. Please come back next week. And as always, I wish you all to stay safe and to stay healthy. Do as you're told, basically. And we'll meet together next week. Good night and God bless.